What is up, guys? It's not my start. Uh, and we are going to be streaming an HSL game today. Gonna what is up guys, this is NMY, today we are going to be casting an HSL game, it will be Texos versus Talmudge Blue Devils. First bands we're going to be seeing, it's going to be uh, Lifestyle and Bristlebeck from Texos, still very strong heroes despite recent nerfs to Lifestealer, and I don't remember if we still got nerfed in the last patch, yeah. and we're also going to be seeing a Nature's Prophet and Morana uh, ban from Tomage Blue Devils, obviously you don't want to deal with the annoying split push for Nature's Prophet, and the Morana, because this Morana is pretty much what won them the game last time with the ults. First pick coming up from Tomage Blue Devils, we're going to see a Clockwork, very strong hero, can offlane, can mid, like really versatile, good p first pick, has a lot of map presence available to it, so yeah, pretty much. Ten seconds to go. Now let's see what Tex is going to come up with it, are they going to get a Lich? Got also quite good against Clockwork, um, Cogs, uh, not too good against Chain Frost, is, uh, if Clockwork Cogs and then Lich throws in the Chain Frost, then he's gonna have a much more difficult time getting out of there. So, yeah, that's a good counter pick coming out. Also, Lich is still a very strong hero. Taxus actually likes to run Lich quite a lot. In their lineups, uh, one of their favorite heroes to use. Who's, and it's really effective. The uh, Ice Armor, Frost Blast, Sacrifice especially, and Chain Frost, all really good. And Disruptor, that's their other, that's their other signature hero. Uh, with the Kinetic Field and the Static Storm. Now the question is, is this going to be a Nave Disruptor? Or a General Captain Disruptor? Because both of these guys play, play Disruptor quite a bit. And both really good at it. Uh, following up, Blue Devil's going uh, to pick up a Silencer. Saying we don't want to have to deal with these two magic casters, uh, we're just gonna get this guy and just silence you all during a fight. Which uh, let's see if this works out. I have never actually seen a silencer work out in a in really any game of Dota. Uh, and I'm just checking right now the cooldowns on spells. Uh, yeah, it looks like silence is gonna be fairly good with this cost of the silence up against disruptor if he ends up being in a ma like matchup, but not against Lich so much due to the uh, low cooldowns, especially on Ice Armor, only 5 seconds. So if he gets uh, last worded or Curse of the Silenced, he's gonna go ahead and um, just, you know, Ice Armor or Frost Blast someone. Darkseer getting banned out, they don't want to uh, deal with that, uh, that uh, Vacuum Chain Frost combo and also static Storm and Kinetic Field on top. Very strong. Probably, I'd say they're either expecting Disruptor to be in the trailing or be in the mid scenario. But we will see. We will see. This team doesn't actually like to run trailings very often. They prefer a um, a jungler with a, an off lane or just straight up dual lanes. Which is good. Dual lanes are very strong due to the recent nerfs of trailings. Aggressive trailings are also very strong, uh, which this, which Texos has done from time to time, uh, with varying levels of success. And, yeah. <laughs> Gonna see a Bane man out. A Bane, very Bane strong Bane. hero. And that will devour to follow up. Bane. That means the Silencer might be going mid. Silence is very good. Uh, like, our will devour is very good against most int mids, because, um, well, you know, they, uh, still the base damage, and we're going to see a PL ban, just don't want to deal with a PL, they're like, we don't have that much good AoE to stop him, just get rid of the PL, it's easy as that. And the Bane, of course, just, we don't want to deal with Bane either, if we get a BKB carry, then 
uh, Bane would be a threat. And Bane's just a good hero in general for setting up stuff and, you know, and messing up things with your team. And also early kills, because yeah, Brain Sap is like a cool. three 300 damage pure nuke. So there's not really much they can do about that. Reserve time. We want to see what Taxus is going to be picking up next. Uh, for them, this is going to probably be the pick that determines whether it's a support disruptor or an, uh, a mid disruptor. I'd say it's it's looking to be a support. If it was going to be mid, I'm fairly sure it would be a last pick of a disruptor. Oh, no, I guess it might actually be a, a support disruptor. Uh, unless Death Prophet decides, unless they, uh, CW decides to go for a carry Death Prophet, then, um, it's very good. Death Prophet is very good hero. Just a really solid, solid hero in a lot of, um, different situations. Of course, Exorcism doing like a million damage certainly helps a lot. It's ridiculous, actually. So, we might see... This is unfortunate, though, because they have Clockwork, and he's just like... He wants to get Blade Mail. Normally, up against the Death Prophet, it's like... We should probably get a Blade Mail, but up against Clockwork... Clockwork's like, I'm already going to get Blade Mail, so this is just good for me. Uh, we're going to see Tomage Blue Devils picking up that Crystal Maiden. Very strong support. Very good early game. Potential keep your carries alive, help you get kills, and, of course, as you get into the mid-game, the ult as well, and the fact that this means that they can't attack. So yeah, very strong hero overall. Plus, uh, Akinora Sans is going to be able to spam out his spells even more than he already can. Five seconds. Let's see what Taxos wants to pick up to counter this. And they're gonna get the Spectre. So this is a mid-death prophet and a support disruptor. It turns out Spectre, also another hero that is like a signature of Taxos. They love to run this. Usually an early fighting Spectre with phase drums, diffusal blade, and if they if uh, she ends up getting free farm, they'll go for the radiant Spectre. Of course, it's really strong. And yeah, Spectre is kind of like, it's a risk. It's a risk versus reward hero. Some games will get Spectre and she'll be like amazing and just dominate team fights and stuff. And other games will get Spectre and she'll just do nothing the entire game. We're going to see a Nyx <coughs> as the next pick for Tomage Blue Devils. Also really strong. I guess this is either going to be a Nyx offlane or a Nyx mid. Or it could still be a Nyx support if Silencer is in fact going mid. And Nyx, really strong against these two int heroes, actually these three int heroes, uh, sorry, with his mana burn that does a million damage to int heroes in the late game, just so strong. And also his ability to pick off squishies, such as Death Prophet, before she has any big items up, and both Disruptor and Lich are fairly squishy heroes. Spectre, not so much, but still, like, she's not really that, um, oh, whoa, what? Okay. <laughs> she's not really that, um... Strong either. The heck was that? <laughs> I guess I opened one of the videos for the skills by right clicking on it. Alright. Yeah. Should be fine. We're gonna see a Slark Band. Slark just an annoying bugger. Same with Weaver. Just getting rid of the heroes. I don't really understand this Weaver pick unless they're expecting a tri lane out of this. And they're gonna see a Storm Alright. So, what is this looking like currently? It's gonna be a Spectre safe lane, Storm Spirit mid. Death Prophet offlane in a dual lane with I with probably Lich and then Disruptors with Spectre. But this I think this was a mistake. Look, they have an all in lineup, and then there's Nyx with Mana Burn. Nyx destroys Storm Spirit, like just destroys him yeah, with Mana Burn. Cool. It's insane how strong he is. And also the fact that he has this stun. Even while it's not really that reliable, like if you most of the times you can get it off, especially if you pick Reserve up a blink dagger on him. So yeah, we'll, we'll be seeing how this Storm Spirit works out. Usually, uh, Nave dominates on the Storm Spirit. Just, that's actually most mids for him. Uh, even, like, 
he'll random heroes and just be like, alright, I'm playing the mid no matter what, and then just still win their lane against, like, some more conventional mid mids, and, um, yeah, Storm Spread is actually one of his best heroes, so we'll see that. We're gonna get an Andy Mage coming out. This is, um, it's a shame for the Storm Spread, the straight up counter pick right here. Here. Um, <coughs> but, yeah, let's see how this works out, because Storm Spread, I don't know, I've never seen the Storm Spread versus Anti Mage matchup really work out in favor of the Anti Mage. It's usually the Storm Spread just doesn't care about him and just kills all of the supports, and then the Anti Mage is like, well, I, I can't do anything now. So, yeah. Text was already up. We'll be getting into the game soon, and then we'll look at what our lanes are shaping up to be. Alright, on the Dire side, we have Chink on the Lich, Ghost Man on the Disruptor, Knave on the Storm Spirit, Mei Mei on the Spectre, one. and General Captain on the Death Prophet. And on the Radiant side, we have Chuck straight out the card in on the Anti Mage, Frozone on the Clockwork, Silencer. I mean, Hater Detective Master Kerbal on the Sansa, better, better Uncle Joey on the Crystal Maiden, and Mr. Incredible on the Nyx. And yes, obviously Anti Mage is going to be the hard carry here. And it looks like Frozone is hitting top, so this is probably going to be uh, uh, either a Silencer or a Nyx mid. We'll wait and see for them to hit their lanes, and then a Tri Lane down bottom to protect that Anti Mage. Meanwhile, as I called, Dual Lane with both Death Prophet and Lich, Storm Spirit mid. And then dual lane with uh, Disruptor and Spectre. Thirty seconds to show time. So, yeah, so it's looking good, and it is in fact a support next. All right, yeah, I don't really know how this is going to work out. Like Nyx is okay in tri lanes, I'd say. Up against this dual lane, especially. <laughs> Especially with the uh, the Lich in it, um, Lich super strong of course, in dual lanes, uh, like just really strong, especially against tri lanes, just being able to get rid of that XP, even if they get forced out, they still get XP from Sacrifice, like he's already part of the way to level and the creeps haven't even met yet, and yeah. Chinese map of course, firecrackers all over the place, and we're gonna... Gonna see how the Spectre fares. Has gone for a stout shield, going for the safer option. Don't really think it's gonna get harassed too much. There is a sentry ward here placed by the Nyx, expecting them to actually care about pulling, but they don't. Uh, but they actually, they are way overextended right here. Nyx could go for a kill maybe, but he's gonna be content with, uh, with just placing some wards. If they got a double stun there, I feel like Nyx could get a kill. Oh. He's pinging out the ward, and he's, I think he, I, does this ward block, I don't actually know if this ward blocks, um, but this camp isn't blocked, so I don't know why nothing's spawning in it, it's either it got bl blocked by the sentry ward, and yeah, looks like it got blocked by the sentry ward, that is quite unfortunate for them, as it means this next is not going to be able to stack up all, and yep, lane already pushing up, for them, just just the power of the Lich, who actually hasn't cast his, uh, his e, e yet on the slain. Or has he? I don't actually know. They're already level 2 compared to Trilane's only just at level 2, despite the fact that this Nyx isn't doing anything. He is very thoroughly warding. I don't think he's realizing, though, that he's accidentally blocked his camp. Like, I don't know if it's because he's standing near it all the time, or if he has like actually uh, just straight up accidentally blocks his camp or what let's see if something spawns in it and then we'll be able to tell if he accidentally blocked his camp and yep he accidentally blocks his camp so that is a huge shame uh... they uh... uh chink is gonna ping out the nyx they know he's here and anti mage is just getting nuked on uh... mr incredible he's looking for a kill uh... general captain Moonwall is just gonna go back clarity up so that uh, <coughs> he can continue to spin out the spells mid uh, over there. Meanwhile, Storm Spirit already has his bottle up. Uh, Silence are not doing as well, pretty close to it, but he did also buy some different starting items. And um, <coughs> uh, sorry, I just uh, stopped talking so that I could sneeze. Uh, Mei Mei already 
picking up that poor man's shield so that he can trade hits effectively with the clockwork. This is looking to be a fairly good free farm lane for him, where he should hopefully be picking up a Radiance. Mr. Incredible is just going to revert to stacking caps. Really, he should not be the hero doing this. If any hero should be in the jungle stacking camps or failing to stack camps it should be the um it should be the CM because the CM she doesn't need levels anywhere near as badly as this Nyx does. This Nyx wants to hit level 6 and then he's a threat. Right now he's not even halfway to level 2. So this is a bit of a mistake of having him just do stuff in the jungle while Crystal Maiden just goes ahead and sticks in lane already sitting at level 3. This trail lane not really working out for them. Anti-Mage, let's actually look at the CS right now. Uh, Anti-Mage is actually sitting at the top, however... Uh, oh, actually no. Storm Sword has taken over. And, but he's really low in life, he is out of regen completely. Uh, he only has shared tangos left, and that's not even helping him that much, as they are on a minute-long cooldown. So, he is looking to be in bad straits for this game. This is anything but a free farm lane, and he's getting quite low in health. Uh, looks like Lich there was going for a Frost Blast. Wouldn't have done enough damage to kill him, but would have gotten him low enough that he'd be forced out of lane. It's really unfortunate for him. He's not going to be able to get much farm for a while. They're just going to go frost blast the Nyx. And, yep. Oh, looks like ganks happening mid. Ghostman going for the kill. Ghostman and Ev, or Nave, going for the kill on the silencer. Not going to happen. Ghostman actually gets quite low, uh, which is fairly unfortunate for him. Stormstar already almost at level 6. Uh, same with the silencer though. So once he hits level 6, I'm pretty sure once he hits level 6, he can get a kill quite easily here. Although maybe not, because if he manages... Yeah, he casted his E. He can just Q and he'll be fine. Okay, uh, if he just lets it do the full tech and gets disarmed. <laughs> Ugh. It's kind of silly. Yeah, he is, he is just at level 6, he can go around the map looking for kills now, he's gonna go bottom in fact. Uh, Nyx is just, Nyx has finally hit level 2 it appears, yeah, finally hit level 2. Uh, they see the storm spirit coming, Nyx is gonna ping it out. Anti-Mage already blinking away, throwing the CM under the bus, Nyx is gonna land an impale here. And storm spirit, he's gonna leap in, he's gonna get this CM kill, easy, done, that's our first blood looking to go into that next next and I think he can do it he just needs to see him like one more auto attack yeah he's good meanwhile anti-mage is heading back to base this try lane really not working out not only is anti-mage forced to head back to base but they have two very like low level they have a low level next only level two and uh, a level four CM but hasn't really done that much looks like Nave is going to be heading to bottle up that haste rune, then maybe look for a gank at top. Oh, Spectre, doing very well, getting free farm. <clears throat> We're going to see if, um, if he, if Mei Mei goes for either a Midas, I mean, not a Midas, either a Radiance or a Diff Blade here. Which one he'll go for, we will see very shortly. It's looking to be a Diff Blade. Oh, Clockwork barely escapes Kinetic Field. Mei Mei is still chasing for some reason, though, instead of going for last hits. I think this is a mistake. I think he should seriously be farming. <clears throat> yeah, he's missed two CS from that. Oh, he actually picks up Phase Boot, so he's going for early fighting Spectre. I think this is, like, really a mistake, that he could just go for a Radiant Spectre, then come out stronger. Keeping Keep in mind that when you use Haunt, the damage from the... Face boots isn't carried over, but the attack speed and base stat from treads is. So face boots not actually too good of a pickup on Spectre. Now that I think about it, oh, it looks like Ev's in some danger. Clockwork's gonna hook his own creeps. Oh, Rocket Flare almost kills him. Kills Ev. He's gonna head back to base though and be fine. Sansa, unfortunately, almost lived. Uh, almost died. I mean. Not of not going to be able to get that kill. Ghostman's going to ro rotate in, get that experience in mid. While no one's here, and where's Spectre? 
Still free farming top. He is going for the phase jumps for early fading build. This is silly because he is getting 100% free farm. And so there is really no point for him to go to this build. This is a build if you're like not doing too well in your lane and you need to catch up. <coughs> he could go for a Radiance and then just dominate the entire game. But no. Maybe he's going for phase drums then Radiance. I really feel like just a straight up brown boots and radiance rush would have been the right thing to do in this situation because as you can see already this is uh, how much bracer cost bracer 525 plus 900 and this uh, that's already around about a bit over a thousand getting close to 2000 gold which he could be put of put towards a radiance or a sacred relic looks like he's gonna go for the kill on frozone not gonna be able to get it I don't think he is going, he's going for the max spectral dagger build. I don't agree with this. We've actually had arguments over this many, many times before. I say that max desolates the best because you can just ult at level 6 and then you do a billion damage to the enemy team once the team fight occurs. Whereas Spect spectral dagger actually does 200 damage, surprisingly. Spectral dagger, you only need one level in it, in my opinion, or two. I don't even, and not even bother with dispersion. You actually end up getting more effective HP out of stats from it. So, yeah. Silence is gonna... Silence... Uh, I have no clue why. Actually, I didn't see... I was too busy talking about uh, the Spectre build and why I thought it was questionable. Next, still only staying at level 3 has just chosen to get a level in Spiked Carapace to try and be a bit more survivable. Early levels in Spiked Carapace are in fact always good. I've found with, uh, with Nyx being one of my best heroes. Oh, and... Ooh! Oh, that, that is going to do quite a lot of damage. Oh, Chink gets a double kill. And he is going to just be content with that. He's going to self up that Chain Frost and that missed hook, saving his life there. If that hook hadn't have missed, uh, they would have been... <laughs> yeah, that Nyx was super unlucky with those bounces. They would have been completely, completely fine. He's going to pick up a ranged creep of sacrifice. Swarm Spirit is balling around, being the baller that he is. Oh yeah, because he has a regen rune, of course he is. They're looking to go on this guy. He's going to get pulled in, swung around, and he's going to get away. Maybe. Blink's on cooldown, actually. He does not have that many levels in it, and Ev, he's going to pick up an anti-mage kill. Might be trading his life for it, but the range on low level 1 next assassin impale is too little. Anti-mage disconnects, um, rage whip, maybe? <laughs> oh, they might get the courier kill. Looks like it gets mecked. What a play. What a play from the lich, mecking the courier. He may trade his life for it, though. Actually, looking like he's going to be fine. And yeah. Haste rune at bot. Uh, they're gonna head back to base now. Be content with all that jazz. They got an anti mage kill, which is very good. He's currently sitting at zero one and zero. Let us look at the net worth. Spectre sitting atop the charts. Just finished up jumps. Yeah, jumps. Yeah, sounds like it was a rage quit. Uh. So he just finished, Spectre just finished up jumps, maybe heading for that Radiance now. Which surprisingly better net worth than the Death Prophet. It's quite, quite funny, actually, considering that the Death Prophet was farming in that lane. And Anti-Mage sitting actually below the Death Prophet's net worth, only at 2,700, basically half of the Spectres. And... Lich is going to get another kill, and they might actually, he's going to, yeah, he's going to go down to the, um, silencer, but they're going to get a revenge kill, and it's GG, okay, very early game, anti-mage rage quits, they decide it's not worth it, we don't have any, um, thing to go of, and Taxos is going to take the game 2-1, to 2-0, to uh, and yeah, unfortunate for Tomage High School. They played well, but unfortunately, not well enough. Uh, so I'd like to thank you all for watching this. Host.
and I will see you in the next game if there is one. Alright, just asked um, one of the Taxos members there is not going to be another game, so that's going to be the end of the stream. For now, thanks everyone for watching. I am going to stop this.